So this video is all about fashionable expansions in motion specific release. We're going to go over specific areas in the back and lumbar spine, which are going to help you actually to release restrictions and deal with a person's pain in a very short period of time comparatively. We would take this information and we would integrate it in with whatever modality we're using. So we'd use soft tissue procedures, we'd use uh, osseous manipulation, and we're combining this with traditional Chinese medicine, specifically acupuncture points. So let's just take a look at the back here for a second. Now, as I was mentioned, in terms of employing fascial expansions, it's a great way for managing low back pain. It basically offers an effective method that integrates current knowledge of fascia, kinetic chain connections, and some pretty fundamental aspects of acupuncture. But before we actually get into those aspects, let's talk about the fascial planes themselves. First off, what are we talking about when we talk about fascia? Fascia is often defined as one interconnecting tensional network that adapts its fibers and arrangements and density according to local tensional demands. What that means is your fascia itself will change its density. When we have an area that's restricted and you start pulling on that over a period of time, it's going to alter literally its anatomical structure. And fascia is so interesting because it actually contains about 10 times the level of neurological receptors as compared to other tissue. When fascia is in uh, good balance, fascia acts to distribute force throughout the entire body. It basically allows us to store and release energy for propulsion and shock absorption. Problem is when fascia is out of balance, we start to get hypertensive or restricted. Fascia becomes the source of multiple dysfunctions. So if we're talking about the lumbar spine and we're talking about different areas, mid back and throughout the areas, right up to the neck, we're going to talk about different layers, superficial, intermediate, deep layers of the fascia. So first of all, we talk about the superficial layer of fascia. The superficial layer of fascia envelopes muscles such as the trapezius. So way up in here, latissimus dorsi, taking it all the way down into the low back. And also consider too that when we we say, okay, latissimus dorsi is a low back muscle. Actually, it connects back up into the shoulder. And muscles such as the gluteus maximus. And it also is incorporated into the thoracolumbar fascia, which we will talk about in a second here. We start getting a little bit deeper. We get onto the in intermediate layer of fascia of the back. The intermediate layer of fascia includes the rhomboids, the serratus, posterior, superior, muscles. Now, if we talk about the rhomboids itself, the rhomboid fascia divides basically near the scapula with a superficial layer connecting into the some of the rotator cuff muscles here into the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus fascia. So way up here on the shoulder. So now we're starting to see how all of these things connect. And also in the deep layer of the on the side here of the serratus anterior fascia. Get a little bit deeper. Deep layers of the fascia of the back. These deep layers comprise the tensor fascia lattice anterior layer and the fascia around the erector spinae muscles. So we're starting to see how all of these things connect. And then we start to get on to the thoracolumbar fascia or the TLF. This fascia has two layers. The posterior layer links latissimus dorsi, the gluteus maximus muscles, the external obliques on the side, and even the trapezius muscles, while the anterior layer connects to the paraspinals and the deep quadratus lumborum muscles to the, uh, basically the abdominal muscle that goes from side to side here, the transverse abdominals in the front. So obviously I had Mickey turn over here because I want to talk about the iliopsoas fascia. Now the iliopsoas fascia is a continuation of the transverse abdominus muscle fascia. So we're, you know, we're going from side to side here. And uh, basically the iliopsoas fascia separates the transversalis from the renal fascia or loose connective tissue. So even though we're talking musculoskeletal here, we're talking low back pain, this is going to have an effect on internal organ function. Now, the iliopsoas fascia connects to various body parts and houses the branches of the lumbar plexus. Now that's why this fascia is so important to mention because this actually affects the lumbar plexus. 
So now with fascial expansions, we're going to explain how you can basically coordinate traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture points, with fascial planes. So the first one we're going to go over is a acupuncture point called bladder 46. So what we do to find this point is basically we're going to go down the spinous processes, just mark this little point here. Mickey gets so happy with me whenever I start marking. <laughs> we had a little uh, thing years ago going on where uh, I told her that uh, this is not a permanent marker. It'll come off immediately, but it wasn't quite. <laughs> Anyways, to get back to uh, uh, urinary bladder 46, this is located basically on the spinous process of the seventh thoracic vertebrae. So go down to one, two, three, four, five six and right down between six and seven, basically, depending on the person's anatomy, the lower part of the scapula there. And then we're gonna move over three chun. So we actually have to go take Mickey's thumb here to figure out what a chun is on her body. And it's a lot more narrow than my thumb. And we've moved over the width of this three of her thumb widths. So bring your hand down there. So I'm actually gonna go over and take mine here and I go maybe one, two, and then three, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come in a little bit here. So I'm gonna go about right there. Now here's the key thing. Whenever there's an acupuncture point, we also through research they found we have a thickening in the fascia. You can feel that right there, Mickey. Mm -hmm. Is that tender right there? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna get in there and I'm not just gonna push down in the area, but I'm actually going to stimulate it. I'm gonna roll the area around a bit and just move it move it around a bit. Okay, how's that feel there? That's good. Is that tight? Yes. Okay, so in traditional Chinese medicine, they definitely will use this for stiffness or pain in the back, but they will also use it for several other things. But we're gonna focus on the musculoskeletal aspect of the acupuncture point. And you, you might say to yourself, okay, if I was to put an acupuncture needle in here, I would put it in, I would stimulate it, I would actually move it back and forth and look for what they call a tug response. So the, person's body is actually grabbing onto the needle. But if you're doing acupressure, you need to get on the area and stimulate it. Now, you could say, how long do I need to stimulate this for? This is going to vary greatly depending on how much it softens. It could be as little as 30 seconds, but you may be on the area for up to even, uh, could be up to three minutes. That's a long time in, in most cases, but um, it, it usually will release before that but it will be somewhere between 30 seconds to three minutes. You okay there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. Do you feel that's actually softening up a bit? Yeah. yeah, when I first got on there, it actually felt really rigid. So the next point we're gonna talk about is urinary bladder 23. Now, this is on the back, 1.5 chun, lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of the second lumbar vertebrae. Just to make it a little bit easier for you here, we've got spinous process, this little red mark here on the lower border is just below that. And if we're using Mickey's hand here, this would be too tuned, but we'd have to come in a bit, so probably about right there. Now, again, we'll get on that. Try to find that. How are we doing there, Mickey? That's good. Is that tender at all? A little bit. A little bit, but not as bad as the other one. No. No, oh, we're on bladder 46 there. Okay. Good. Now, in terms of, this is often used for lumbar pain or low back pain, but in traditional Chinese medicine, they would consider this point strengthens the kidneys, tonifies the kidney meridian. Doing okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna stimulate that point right in there. And I don't have to be right on the absolute point because I'm actually can feel thickenings in the fascia, but you need to get on there. And again, we're gonna stimulate this point somewhere between 30 seconds and three minutes. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Actually, it doesn't feel like it's, almost immediately it's the area softened yeah. right up, which is interesting. So now we're gonna go on to urinary bladder 25. One point that I wanna mention though, we're not just gonna stimulate one side of the spine here, we'd actually get on both sides of the spine to stimulate it. So on this one, urinary bladder 25, and this is basically 1.5 chun lateral to the lower border of the fourth lumbar vertebrae. So this point right down here, just a little bit below that, and we're gonna come over, well, it's not gonna be as wide as my thumbs, but we're gonna bring it into about right there. 
How are we doing there, Mickey? That's good. A bit tight there? Yep. Okay, all right. So we're going to kind of roll that area there. Feeling that a bit more? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I just push down and push pressure on here, you don't, you, you feel it, but it, mm -hmm. it's it's not that much. Mm -hmm. But start getting in there. Oh, I feel yeah. like we're getting more into the fascia, the connective tissue there too. Good. And again, we would stimulate urinary bladder 25 for about 30 seconds to three minutes. In most cases, it'll let up a lot sooner than the three minute point. Mm -hmm. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting when you work on the area too because you can literally feel the area start to change. Feel that softening up there? Way more, yeah. Yeah. Good. So the next point is going to be bladder 54. Now this is located at the midpoint of the popliteal crease on the back of the knee. And we're basically just going to get into this area here. Now, one of the things we should be talking about it is that we're actually treating low back pain but I'm stimulating a point behind the knee and that's one thing you'll see in acupuncture is that there'll be distal points away from the area and they can actually very effectively treat low back pain by using some of these points. They can do this because of well from a scientific perspective an increase in neurological receptors in the area especially in the extremities where the acupuncture points are you will find a increased density or a thickening of the fascia and as we mentioned there's 10 times the neurological receptors in the fascia as compared to other tissue let's bend your leg here a little bit you doing okay there mickey yeah good Good. And again, we'll be here for 30 seconds to three minutes. But I don't think we'll be here that long in your case. Good. So the next point we're going to go over is small intestine three. Now, to find this particular one, I'm going to get you to make a loose fist there, Mickey. So the point is on the ulnar aspect, so this side along here of the hand, proximal to the fifth metacarpal phalangeal joint. So we're talking probably up into here at the end of the transverse crease of the metacarpal phalangeal joint at the junction of the red and white skin. So the red area here, white here, in between, we're talking about right in here. Okay, I'll take it in there and get on there. Mickey, how you doing there? Oh, it's a little tender. A little tender right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I could just apply direct pressure, but if I get a little bit of motion in there, you're probably feeling it a bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And this is a really interesting point, too, because besides lumbar and sacral pain, uh, they use this for acute spasms, obviously in the hand, the elbows, and the arm, but also rigidity in the head and the neck. Now, when we consider that acupuncture in its current state has been around for at least 2,000 years, actually they started out using uh, stones that were uh, pointed or sharp, and they started that process about uh, oh, about close to 6,000 years ago. They can record back. So it took them about 4,000 years to actually refine it to its current point. <laughs> but uh, they achieve remarkable results. So this is one of the points we would use also for lumbar pain, low back pain. This is small intestine three. So for the next point, we're going to go on small intestine four. It, again, is located on the ulnar aspect of the palm in the depression between the fifth metacarpal bone and the hamate bone. So actually, small intestine five is farther up in here. If I come down below there towards the hamate and uh, the junction of the red and white skin. So just on the crease here, right in between. Mickey, how you doing right, right there? Uh, Feeling that? Yeah, yeah. That is a bit tender, isn't it? So if I just put direct pressure, you feel it, but it's... Not as much as... When I start that. pressure plus motion. <laughs> Moving, so we want to go circular, clockwise, counterclockwise, up and down, you know, move it all around quite a bit. And again, we're going to be on here somewhere between 30 seconds to uh, three minutes. Good. This is an interesting point, too, because in traditional Chinese medicine, they use it traditionally for pain in the lumbar spine and the leg. I mean, they also use it for contractures in the fingers and pain in the wrist. Uh, especially when a person has problem holding things in their hand, they would use this point. 
and it seems to free up the entire hand. But in our case, we are focusing on the lumbar spine. But commonly with lumbar spine problems, we also may get leg pain. So if you're working on this area and the person comes back and says, yeah, that lumbar spine is okay, but also my leg pain is gone. They never even told you about the leg pain. Don't be surprised. So the last point we're going to show is small intestine six. This is on the dorsal side of the ulnar aspect of the forearm in the depression on the radial side of the stylite process of the ulna. So radius, ulna, depression in between, right about there. How are we doing there, Mickey? Good. Is that tender at all or not yeah. too bad? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But you can definitely feel the depression right in there. Move that around a bit. And this is a common one that is used in acupuncture for acute lumbar pain. It's also used for pain in the shoulder, back, elbow, and arm. But we're combining all these points together to show you how we can actually address fascial expanses, expansions. So we're moving the area around quite a bit. Because as we are saying, there's going to be a thickening in the fascia especially in the extremities around the acupuncture points. And we're using a distal point here. It's kind of an interesting thing too, because sometimes people are very acute, uh, experiencing extreme lumbar pain, and it's very difficult to get in there. So you can actually use some of these points to address those areas using distal points. Again, this is small intestine six.